It's Dr. Annette. I hope you're having a great day. Today we are talking about aspirin and its effects on your body. And um, I think this is a very important topic. And for those of you that are just hopping on, I'm Dr. Annette. And I love to talk about things that help you feel better, have more energy, and live the life that you want to live with energy and vivacious happiness. And, you know, be able to spend time with the people you love and do things you want to do and live your life upright and not in a wheelchair or in a home. <sighs> Whew, that got heavy fast. Anyway, poop talk today is about low dose aspirin. Do you, have you ever seen on TV or like a um, advertisement of some kind that said you should take a low dose aspirin every day to prevent your risk of a heart attack? Now, um, that's been advice that's been given out for a very long time about heart conditions. But here's the thing. Just like the whole fat is bad for you thing, it got misconstrued and taken out of context. And, of course, the baby aspirin people jumped all over it and they were like, "Woo, this is a way to sell more baby aspirin. But here's the deal. Low-dose aspirin has been proven to help people who have already had some sort of event. And the reason that is is because it thins the blood. So aspirin thins your blood. That's what it does. That's what its job is. And the problem with that being common knowledge is that people are taking aspirin daily because they think they're helping their self. They think they're making their heart healthier by doing this, but there is absolutely no evidence that aspirin every single day is good for your heart unless you've already had a heart attack. As a matter of fact, that taking an aspirin every single day is bad for you because it thins your blood and it can actually increase bleeding if you are um, injured or say maybe you're one of those people that's been doing this for a while and you're like, no, no, it's healthy for me. This is why I'm doing it. Do you bruise easier than you used to? Are you getting bruises? What I call unidentified party marks, UPMs, like you had went out yesterday and you went golfing or you spent some time with friends or you went out dancing and you came home and you have bruises all over your legs and you can't figure out how they got there because you don't remember doing anything. That's because your blood is too thin and your blood vessels are too fragile. Now, there's a couple of reasons that can happen. One could be a lack of vitamin C, but two, and fibrinogen, but two, it could be a lack, I mean, and too much aspirin. Your blood is too thin, so it's seeping out of your blood vessels and causing bruising. Yeah, that happens. So, if you are already doing this and you've not been advised by a doctor to do so, I highly recommend that you don't do it, but here's the deal. If you've been doing it for years, you need to go talk to your doctor before you make any drastic changes to your daily program. If you have been thinking about doing it, do not start unless you've been advised by a doctor that it's necessary for you. And here's my caveat to that whole thing. If your doctor tells you that you need to take a low dose aspirin every single day and you have not had a heart attack or a stroke, I implore you to ask more questions. Ask them what the purpose is, why they think it's going to be necessary, and maybe ask them if they have any research that proves that it's going to help you. Seriously, ask for evidence that that is the best way for you to go. Because aspirin, I'm going to study right here, aspirin has been proven to cause lesions in the stomach and the gastrointestinal tract they occur rapidly even with low dose aspirin which is what they tell you to do and the association of aspirin consumption with upper gastrointestinal bleeding has been well established so if you're one of those people that's already dealt with ulcers in your life or you have um, problems with burning when you take certain pills or different things or certain foods you probably don't have a very good mucosal barrier to protect you and taking low dose aspirin can actually complicate those issues for you and make it worse. So um, chronic aspirin consumption can also cause iron deficiency anemia. 
If you're taking aspirin daily and you're anemic, guess what? You're probably bleeding out inside your, in your intestinal tract. And if you've gone in and had some sort of a test done and they said you had blood in your stool, guess what? If you're taking aspirin, that could be one of the reasons why there's blood in your stool. What else does this say? Oh, it can cause esophageal issues. So aspirin is, is irritating, right? It's got salicylic acid in it. And that's what they use to like get rid of acne and like clean off your skin. So if it's, if salicylic acid, which is the main ingredient in aspirin, is strong enough to take off the top layer of your skin on your face, which is exposed to the wind and the rain and the cold and the heat on a daily basis, what does it do to the inside of your body that is protected? Just think about that for a moment. Aspirin can be damaging. Now, I'm not saying that aspirin cannot be helpful because it can. Aspirin has been proven to help with a lot of different things, but that's on a short-term basis. You take an aspirin maybe once or twice, and then you don't take it again for six months. Not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking it every single day because you're trying to prevent a heart attack that you've never even had yet, and you're, you're basically treating yourself for a condition that you haven't been diagnosed with. So this particular article, which is from NIH, says... Um, the introduction was this review focuses on aspirin-related gastrointestinal side effects and the mechanism by which aspirin causes gastrointestinal damage. That's the title of the article. And the future prospects and projects that are listed after all of this information said patients should be made aware of adverse gastrointestinal effects due to aspirin. Did your doctor tell you that taking aspirin every single day, even at a low dose, might cause complications. If they did not, you need to ask more questions. Further studies regarding prophylactic therapy, which means preventative therapy, of low dose aspirin induced gastroduodenal lesions, which identify a subset of patients who may be at a higher risk then the low-dose aspirin population as a whole are warranted. So they're saying further studies are warranted because it shouldn't be considered a treatment for all people. There are certain people that aspirin therapy can be dangerous for. There are certain people that should not take aspirin ever. There are certain things that aspirin does inside your body that affects you in a different way. Your body is different than mine. It's different than the guy next door. It's different than the person walking down the street next to you. And you should be treated as an individual and the things that go inside of your body should be, should be considered based on your personal makeup. And what I'm telling you is that Taking aspirin every single day without being prescribed aspirin can be dangerous to your health. It can be dangerous, say, say you're taking an aspirin every single day and you fall down and hit your head. You could have a brain bleed and it, it wouldn't necessarily even have to be a, a hard hit. You could bang your head you know, bending over to get something out of the cabinet and bang your head, how do you know that you don't have a brain bleed that's causing damage inside your body? And you're taking aspirin every single day, which is thinning your blood. How do you know? So I implore you, again, if you are taking aspirin every single day, talk to your doctor and find out if it's necessary for you. Because if it is not necessary for you, you need to find out for them from your doctor how to wean yourself off of it and to make sure that it's not going to cause you other issues. And if it is necessary for you, which I doubt that it is, um, talk to your doctor about your options. Now, I'm not telling you to either start or stop something immediately because there are side effects to stopping any long-term um, supplement or drug and some things cannot be stopped cold turkey. It's not good for you to do that. So if you are taking aspirin and you're concerned about the effects of it happening to your gut, you need to speak to your doctor. 
Don't just say, oh, Dr. Annette said don't take aspirin every day and go and stop doing it because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there is evidence and there are research papers out there that say that aspirin is not the answer to every single heart disease issue. And the only time aspirin is recommended, hi Kathleen, the only time aspirin is recommended as a treatment is if you've already had a heart attack. That's the only time. And there are studies out there that recommend it as a post heart attack treatment. So it says basically, um, here's another study that says last fall, um, outcomes from an aspirin regimen were equally balanced by major, major bleeding events, major. They're using the word major. It estimated that if 10,000 people took low dose aspirin every day, which is less than 100 milligrams every day for a year, four, four fewer people would suffer a heart attack or stroke than if none of the 10,000 had taken aspirin. That's not a very high amount. So it's like 0.04%. While seven more would suffer serious bleeding in their skull, brain, stomach, or gut. Yeah. So, which, and that's 0.007 or 0.07%, like seriously. But I mean, we're talking about, so four people might be saved from some sort of cardiovascular event, which seriously, your blood being a little bit thinner only prolongs the inevitable, seriously. It just prolongs the inevitable. If you have blockages in your arteries, taking an aspirin to thin your blood is not the answer. It's not. It's just going to prolong the inevitable. And if you um, are taking aspirin every single day and you have bleeding in your skull, your brain, your stomach, or your gut, you are not going to know that that is going on unless something happens, unless you get a test. So if you've had a test done recently and they told you that you had had blood in your stool, are you taking aspirin? Because that's probably where it's coming from. Because you're bleeding microscopic amounts and it's coming out in your stool. So the whole topic of poop talk today is aspirin Low dose aspirin, is it necessary? I doubt it. There, are my, there might be a few people whose medical doctors tell them that they should take it. I am not disputing that. If your doctor told you to do something, you do what he told you to do. But what I am saying is, if you're concerned, ask questions, ask for evidence, ask for studies, ask for things that explain why it's beneficial for you, and do the risks or benefits outweigh each other? Are the benefits of taking this particular drug outweighing the risks? And if they do outweigh the risks, are they explaining to you what those risks are? Does your doctor say, I want you to take a low dose aspirin every single day because of this, but this is what you need to watch for? Are they giving you steps? This is what you need to watch for. If you see any of these things, if you feel any of these things, if this happens to you, I want you to call me. We might need to change. Yes, Kathleen, be informed. Make sure that you understand what is going on in your body and make sure that you are taking care of yourself. You are your best health advocate. No one's going to do it for you. You are the only person who knows what's going on inside of here. If something doesn't feel right to you, if something doesn't sound right to you, if your gut tells you something isn't quite right, you're the only person who knows that. You're the only person who feels that. And if you're doing something that's making you uncomfortable, you have the right to ask questions. You have the right to ask for more information. You have the right to be informed and um, don't go Dr. Google things and just go off half keeled on, 
on something that you saw on Google, get information, find out the truth, understand it, ask someone who knows, ask someone that you trust that's in a medical uh, position. And if you don't agree with your medical doctor, go find a different one, get a second opinion. There's plenty of doctors out there. You can find doctors that are doing tons and tons and tons of continuing education so that they stay at the top of their field. And then you can also find medical doctors who haven't been to a medical conference or read a book in forever. So my advice is to find a doctor who is actively pursuing education and is trying to be the best doctor they can be. Somebody who's, who's staying active and understanding how the human body works. There is new information that comes out all the time. If you have a doctor who went through medical school and then literally only goes to the continuation, a continuing education that they're required to go to and nothing else, guess what? They might not be at the top of their field. They might not have current information. So keep yourself informed, ask lots of questions, and if you don't like the answers you get, do more research. Find a doctor who's more up to speed on what's going on and take charge of your own health. Be in charge of you. And if you don't trust something, ask lots of questions. And something as harmless as an aspirin. What about your parents? Are your parents in a nursing home taking low dose aspirin every day even though they've never had a stroke or a heart attack? What happens if they fall out of bed or bang their head or get a really bad bruise and it causes a blood clot? Like what? Be informed. Look out for your family. Aspirin thins your blood. That's why people think it's good for a heart attack. And sometimes what they'll do, if you call 911 and say, I think I'm having a heart attack, they'll tell you to take two aspirin before the people get there. That is a preventative measure. That is not the same thing that we're talking about here. We're talking about taking an aspirin every single day for the rest of your life and not knowing what it might be doing inside of your body because you weren't prescribed it you weren't told to do it, and you didn't ask the questions that are necessary. Do not self-treat with aspirin. Now, if you have a headache and you take aspirin, totally different. But, so, it thins your blood, which can be a good thing, and it can be a bad thing, depending on what you're doing. It irritates the lining of your stomach, your gastrointestinal tract. And if you already have ulcers, it's going to make them worse, and it could cause ulcers if you've never had them, if your body is not as healthy as it should be. Do not use it daily unless you've been medically prescribed to do so. And low-dose aspirin is only helpful. This is proven fact. You can do research on it. It's only proven to be helpful after you've had a cardiac event, not before. So do your research and find out what's going on. And before you take any prescription drug, Make sure you talk to your doctor about the side effects. Make sure you understand what you should watch for in case it does affect you in a negative way and be absolutely certain that you know what's going on with your body at all times. And um, hopefully this reaches people that need to be reached because this is my soapbox for the day. Honestly, I was doing some research for Poop Talk this morning and I ran across this article about aspirin and I was like, oh, this is totally what I need to talk about. Because it seems like nothing, right? It's over the counter. It seems harmless. It's just an aspirin. But there are studies. There is research out there. As a matter of fact, I will copy and paste this article. Hey, Patty. Hey, Janet. Into this um, thing here for you guys. And oh, I'll pin it. I'll pin it to the top. So you can see the, one of the studies that I was looking at. Um, I can only pin one, so you'll have to look at that one. Um, and it's on Facebook, guys. But it's NIH, and the title of it is Digestive Complications of Aspirin. So you can search it. But go do your own research. And then if you don't like what you hear, then go talk to someone else. Get a second opinion. Just make sure that what you're doing is healthy for you. Make sure that what you're doing is healthy for your parents and healthy for your family. And for God's sake, don't take aspirin on a daily basis unless you have already had 
a cardiac event or you've been prescribed it by a doctor who understands the side effects and has discussed them with you and you understand what you should be watching for in case there is a side effect. So that's my poop talk for today. I know it's really serious, but I've been kind of off for like a week because I've been sick. So I had to bring it today. <laughs> so I hope this was beneficial. If you know someone who could be helped benefited by this information, please, please, please share this with them. Please um, follow and like my page. I love you guys. Make sure you click on see first. I have a little image that shows you how to do it right there on my Be Better page. Make sure that um, everybody out there knows that they are in charge of their own health and they are their own best advocate. Nobody knows your body like you do. And if something doesn't sound or feel right, chances are it isn't. So go do the research, figure it out, and ask for help. And if you don't like the help you got, ask again. Get a second opinion. That's my wisdom for today. I love you guys. If nobody's told you yet today, I love you. You're amazing. You deserve everything this world has to offer. And all you have to do is go get it. It's yours for the taking. Have a great day.